Hello, I'm Gary Lyon and welcome to Access All Areas. There were some amazing comebacks this round and also a few teams who unfortunately lived up to their shaky reputations. Welcome to Matthew Lloyd, Damien Barrett. Yeah, guys, uh, Richmond and West Coast again embarrassed themselves in a round of footy and, and Melbourne was very, very ordinary against North Melbourne. And for mine, I thought Geelong made the biggest statement of the weekend. If they get their attitude right, uh, they can beat anyone on any, any given day after a poor three weeks. And the Eagles, we, we talked about them, Damien. They've got to own their reputation right now yeah. and that is a team that struggles uh, in a big way when they step outside of Western Australia and I know that it makes them bristle and it upsets them but facts are facts mm. and when you watch them play like they did against mm. Essendon uh, they've got an issue, they've got problems. I wouldn't watch this just as a spectator actually this is the second quarter and I sat behind these goals and this was a, a bad bad moment by Shuey, he didn't want that ball, Joey sweated on him Snapped it. It was actually... Uh, Look at the score. Uh, that was 16 yes. to 32. Arguably, you'd say that is the, fi the, that was the finish of them. And, I mean, you were critical yeah. to Lordo, having just watched it as a spectator of McGovern. Yeah, McGovern has got to realise that his midfield's not going well, so I've got to tighten up. But McGovern wants to play on his terms time and time again. He doesn't adjust his game at all. Joey Danner is his man. He's still impacting. And McGovern's still sitting back doing nothing. It really, I, I was shocked by what they were doing in this one. Look at him. Number 20 there, the fourth front. Uh, Barras, what does he want to do? He, he just kicks, should have handballed it, doesn't do it, he panics and uh, this ball, Fantasia, he wants it more. These defend Gaff didn't want to go hard enough there. And then there's ownership. Look at, um, Yo points to green, Shepard points to green. Hmm. Well, who's getting green? I mean, one of them's going to play loose in the back half, so therefore someone's got to tighten up. In the end it looks like Yo made the decision because he just runs off. Yeah. Green is still there, so therefore Shepard's got responsibility. He just sits and, and watches and Green kicks yeah. a goal. That comment you made about the reputation of this club, Gaz, that they bristle every time we on this side of the country uh, dare yeah. say they're flat-track bullies, yet they do nothing to, to dispel that rumour. No, they went to Adelaide and won against Port Adelaide, which would have been reasonable. Yeah. But I think Adam Simpson almost conceded as much after. He said it was you know, not good enough or disappointing and then laid the blame uh, feeling squarely at his leaders. Do you put a line through their premiership hopes now, Lorda, on what you've seen after nine uh, games? No, no. And yeah. just because the, the, this competition is so even. So yeah. I don't. Just want to say, Hurley, Dan Her Merritt, their three best players were magnificent. The Bombers were sensational yesterday. Yeah, and credit to them yeah. because we thought a couple of weeks ago they were staring down at Hey, North Melbourne did what they've been doing for the best part of, I don't know, 10 years, 11 years, and that is beating Melbourne at the yeah. MCG yesterday. And whilst the Demons will be spoken about as an inability to come up after a good win, credit to North Melbourne. Um, they found a way. And, and really, when you looked in the cold hard light of day, Goldstein in the ruck against a gornless Melbourne. Yeah, Pedersen and Watts having to yeah. make shift. And then I just thought their back half with Terry. Um, been able to cover whoever, and then Brown was going to be the problem. It's a problem, isn't it, Lord? After coming off the, when they had the previous week, the Demons, and then dishing that up, mm. it's a, we're, we're no clearer, are we, on knowing what they're going to produce on a weekly basis no. under Simon Goodwin? No, and I get criticised for saying I can't trust the results, but that is the reality of life, and until such time as you, you can back them up week after week, they're going to have to live with that, yeah. a bit like West Coast. Well, you look at, say, Geelong's attitude, and we'll get to them soon, you could see their attitude in the first five minutes. We have to change what's going on in recent weeks. And they set a scene. And you look at uh, Melbourne, they conceded 20 inside 50s and six goals, and suddenly they're chasing tail again. That's what they can't keep doing if yep. they want to be a good side. And they're on notice. That, yeah. You know, yeah. We think this is going to happen. Therefore, mm. you go, well, let's be on edge. Let's and it still happens. Um, North, you, you're starting to rate them. Yeah, I've liked North Melbourne. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you know that. Um, yeah. I don't think they're going to play finals, but, I mean, who knows in this competition? They've got good young talent coming through, which I like. Let's get to the Tigers, yeah. who are, unfortunately for them, going to be on the menu... Once again, these are the three games that they've played in and lost by less than a goal. And this was the Western Bulldogs that was deemed to be deliberate, which, unlucky or not, ends up being a goal. After the siren to Monday, which broke every Richmond supporter's hearts because of the way that unfolded. And then you had this situation. Lord, I talk us through it. Well, to me, they have gone man-on-man -man here, Richmond. They have gone man-on-man -man with a minute 13 to go. Is that the right thing to do? Yes, that's, that's fine. Yep. Uh, go man on man. Anyway, we'll just watch. Obviously, we all know what happened. Jeremy Cameron is the man who gets out the back and kicks the goal. What we've got here is in Access All Areas is exclusive vision to, to camera angles that no one else has got. So this has been our opportunity to sit down and have a look at this. And the Tigers will be doing this today. But for our audience, mm. let's just show you what happened. So, Lordo, we've identified one-on-one. -on -one. Everyone on the ground's one-on-one, -on -one, we think, except Jack. So Jack Revolt, that's his man in the centre of the ground. That's Phil Davis. And the other man will, it was just circled there is Shai Bolton playing his first space. game. His man is Nathan Wilson, who is kicking in. So both those two men, 
Shy's given 10 metres, which he shouldn't have given. And now watch Phil Davis. And then the space behind the yes. centre circle, goal side, is what we want to have a look at. Because they're man on man, there's yes. all this room, goal side of this contest. And Phil Davis is Revolt's man, and he is the player who has the ability to whack the ball over. And then Alex Rance makes a decision. decision. He comes up to the contest, mm. which is OK, mm. but once you commit to that, given the space behind, you leave yourself vulnerable to that. And that's Camden McIntosh didn't go. Cameron gets involved when McIntosh did not impact the play whatsoever. So <laughs> I, I, it comes back to me, for Jack Revolt and also Shay Bolton, who let this... Yeah, this one it's, it's staggering to think they could allow yeah. that much space in that situation when they had the review, knowing that the possibility, mm. strong possibility, was going to be behind. And I'm even more, I suppose, dismayed, Gaz, about, and, and Woody, mm. about what Damien Hardwick said post-match. And again, it may have been a heat of the moment use of the word proud. I'm proud of my players. What's there to be proud of? If I'm Peggy mm. O'Neill or Brendan Gale, I'm actually calling him in and saying, Damien, what are you proud of after yeah. nine games of footy this year? Because it's, it's, again, heading a very similar path to Richmond. Public messaging versus private would be fascinating, wouldn't it? Well, get it right. You get, at least get your, your public messaging yeah. right if you can't get what you're doing well, on the ground yeah. right. Well, what I'm saying is what he's given to his players, you'd hope, is mm. a, a fair bit harsher mm. than what he's you know, publicly putting out there. Yeah, well, again, four in a row, and the last two just been a disastrous yeah. circumstance. Perryman first game, Lordo, yeah. crucial in what happened in that final minute. He only had seven touches, but he had seven tackles and two huge smothers. So there's the first smother on Revolt and the second smother on Bolton before the review. So that was massive. Brave win by the Giants. I know they're not playing great football, but uh, 28 players to choose from, I think they had this week, and yeah. they've been scrounging wins. 25 points down, whatever it yeah. was, three quarter time, so they're second on the ladder and they're finding a way. Uh, let's go to the next game, and this is yeah. an extraordinary match as well. Um, the Rick Collingwood Footy Club mm. against Hawthorne. Uh, the, the first quarter and 20 minutes, mm. you could understand why Nathan Buckley suggested he was thinking about heading home. And this, we had to fasten this up. This is all one play, by the way, and the reaction from the crowd, well, we heard the boos. You can I, see the yeah. score. I, I covered this game, guys, and I, I said during the call, I don't think you could say what Nathan Buckley's game style is because they don't have one. Mm. That's yeah. how critical I was of it, and this is still going on. We to, it, it reminded yeah, me of Richmond yeah. when yes, Richmond were right. going badly. It was that's just crabbing sideways without wanting to take the game on. And it played into a slow Hawthorne team's hands where yeah. they just pressed up the field. You see the frustration in these fans. And this is where it all changed. I reckon half time Nathan said, OK, we're not playing well. Let's take some risks. Let's be bold. It's exactly how they played against Geelong a few weeks ago and got the result. And this isn't clean play, but it's amazing as a forward, Gary, where we, yep. we both played. When they're bowled down the ground, you get one-on-ones, yep. and they expose a, a slow Hawthorne defence. And, and even if that first or second mm. handball might not necessarily... Mm. Like, these aren't necessarily no. the best handballs, but they get people moving, yeah. and all of a sudden you're out, you get it in the hands of your best ball users, and look what happens. And Jamie Elliott's on the fat side of the ground, the opposite side, but it allows him just to tap. His man can't go with him, and... It's amazing what movement does, which Collingwood have just got to be bolder and, and, and riskier from the opening bounce. And, and guys, there's a fascinating story within the story itself that what happened on Saturday night is the Tom Mitchell 50 possession yeah. game in that both uh, coaches had very different yeah. views on, on the effect and impact of the game, but it's mm. unusual for someone to get 50 and for it to be so critiqued uh, nastily yeah. in, in Mitchell's case. You didn't give him best on ground either. No, I gave him third best on ground, but he was Hawthorne's best player by a long, long way. So he played a great game of mm. football, but he wasn't didn't hurt the opposition like Pendlebury did. But, but is that... That's not his and fault, it, is it? There's no, no one running... Very strong on this. No, yeah. I think it's more yeah. to do... It's not Sam... Uh, yeah. Sam, Sam. It's not Tom Mitchell. Yeah. It's what he's got around him. Mm. And yeah. if, you, if you had had your Brad Hill at, the, mm. at your best and Isaac Smith at your best and all these runners to distribute. So the metres gain will be thrown up constantly. It was 300 or something. I mean, identify his role. He's not a metres gain player. No. Uh, he was 87 in the comp, apparently, for metres gained. He's number one in the competition for assisted metres gained. Wow. So his issue is to mm. distribute. Mm. Nathan Buckley, uh, full credit to him, because sitting at home on the couch, Lordy, I'm thinking, mm. Greenwood to Mitchell, why aren't you doing it? This might cost you your career. Yeah. He held his nerve and got it right yeah. and had a famous victory, mm. or famous in the context. So many things to, to not like about uh, Brisbane Lions, uh, Lord, but this their game against Adelaide. There was a quirk in the, the timing situation here. You can see two seconds remaining in the, the first Right up quarter. your alley this one, Dave. Well, I'll go upstairs in a minute, Gaz, after we come off here. But play doesn't start, even though the ball's in play. And, and we're just trying to work out what happened here. The timekeeper seems so, to, to, to realise this. Now, shouldn't it? it should be by, by that now, certainly. Um, the timekeeper seems to realise it, but the umpire, yeah, you can see here as we... Uh, 
back over it uh, seems to pick up on it too late. Again, no dramas because of the uh, the blown out scoreline that went Adelaide's way in the end. But uh, You're just at putting, some stage, putting him on notice, though, mate, so that this doesn't happen in a big game where the scores are tight and they don't uh, get into trouble. Correct. And then otherwise, we would have to send you upstairs to sort that. I'll out. go up anyway. Hey, uh, I thought the Swans. Mm. I wasn't well. I was convinced enough to know that they're back playing mm. good footy, Lloydy. But I need to see one more example that their hunger was back, and I think it was really emphatic against what well, a side that I rate pretty highly in security. Yeah, well, three in a row. They beat Brisbane, which you'd expect. Yep. North yep. now looks like a better win because yep. they smashed them, mm. and then they've smashed and killed her on the rise. So could go down later in the year as foot, one of football's great mysteries. What went on at Sydney <laughs> yeah. in that first six? Got a real small margin for error. Yeah, yeah. yeah. three probably losses that they can have mm. and yep. they've got Adelaide in Adelaide, they've got GWS and they've got Geelong down Geelong. Mm. Tough. After what happened in 2016 and then you saw what happened in rounds one and two guys, we sat here on Access All Areas after round two and said the Dockers were done, yep. shot to bits. Yep. Uh, seven games later, six wins later, yep. they're in the, uh, the conversation for top four again. They're fifth. <laughs> which is unbelievable. And it's either by design or by desperation. Let's, uh, if you want to give credit mm. to Rossi Lyon, you say he saw it and identified the I need think you the can problems. because they had that big coming to arms meeting with senior players where he really put it on the line, didn't he? And made significant changes into round three, six. Yeah. Also, desperation or design. Hmm. One or the other. I, don't, I mean, bits of both probably. You Giving can't design, I reckon. Giving design, yeah. yeah. And uh, Michael Walters again turned the game. I thought he was poor the first five or six rounds, but right. a, there was a chase and tackle that changed the game on Lockie Plowman, and yeah. then he picked the ball up and kicked the goal. Great response from the Dockers, yeah. You talk about responses. Mm. I mean, if you had to put your life on a response from individuals, first of all, Geelong, the week after they refused to tackle, you would have said... Dangerfield and Selwood, well, they did, but it was Duncan and Scott Selwood that put together, and then 134. Uh, you could have set your clock by that, and it's one thing to say it. You did say it. I, I doubted it, but you, you did say it this time last week that they would oh, do did that. did you doubt it? I did. I should have remembered that. <laughs> uh, no, they were terrific, and you know they got Port Adelaide this week, and we'll find out whether they can back it up again. Hey, boys, it's time for our lift hard-hitting moments, and I went straight for this game because there are so many of them, and uh, <coughs> not surprisingly... Joel Selwood set the scene, uh, Dangerfield set the scene early, Cole Jazzy, they all got involved, but uh, that man, best captain of the competition. I'm going to move on to uh, the St Kilda Swans game. Nunes on Mills. I, I don't expect there to be an issue with Mills there, Gaz, but Nunes was seriously hurt in the head. Great contest. Yeah, this was brilliant. Nunes, Nunes has played 74 games straight, so uh, may miss from this point on. But just, I love this. Both yeah. players, Howe and Aish. A lot has been made of Aish. He's been in and out of the side. Maybe he has lacked that hardness. Fractured cheekbone out of it, but he'll win plenty of credits for that. All right, I think both of you boys had me covered on that one. <laughs> hey, very nice work, lads. We'll see you next month. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a very good week. And we'll see you next Monday on Access to the Goodbye.